Hey folks, this is Matt Rainwater, and today I'm writing solo. Um, my apologies to uh, Crimpod from last episode. I did not realize that... I don't know why I thought... I just assumed that OBS would be recording you as well. Because I'm like, oh, I can hear you in my ears, so surely the, you know, the, the recording device should be able to hear you too. Um, well, anyway, it worked out, right? I, I enjoyed that episode, and next time I'm going to uh, set it up in such a way. I think I know how to do it properly. I'm still, I'm still working out the bugs of uh, learning how to do all this stuff. Um, what I need is I need somebody to just like sit around me just to troubleshoot with me so I can be like, oh, can you hear this? Does this work? Et cetera, et cetera. That's the thing. Um, I'm not like the most tech savvy person I used to be, but I've gotten older. And so now um, I'm having to learn stuff, learn new stuff. I can't just assume <laughs> I've got it in the bag like I used to. Um, but that's life, right? You get older and uh, the world doesn't necessarily move in the same direction you're moving or at the same pace that you're moving. Stuff changes. But uh, nevertheless, here we are, right? And so I'm doing Colors for Bella. Um, and this will have happened well after this actually gets published. But uh, tonight I'm going on an interview, which is going to be really fun, um, of a podcast called Keeping It Geekly. And uh, the person who does the podcast, uh, his name's Cody. He's pretty awesome. I enjoy the interviews he's doing because he does stuff in indie with like independent comics, right? So like that's his jam. And um, I, I feel a little bit weird because I'm sort of, I'm I am independent in a sense, but I sort of skirt that line because working with Webtoon is sort of like I'm in this weird hybrid state where I'm, I've got a partnership with a big company to help me publish um, my work, right? And yet, on a certain level, I kind of can do whatever I want, which is kind of nuts to me. Like, um, In some sense, I would say what I get to do is almost the best of both worlds. Um, I have complaints, you know, and we've talked about these complaints in the past. Um, you take with the good with the bad. Um, the good is uh, a certain amount of in income stability, which is kind of nice. Uh, the bad is I have to basically uh, talk with Webtoon if I want to do certain things. I just have to get their opinion in on it, basically. Which is, you know, like I said, it come it comes with its advantages and its disadvantages, right? Um, I like the income stability. Not gonna lie, it's kind of nice. Uh, I like. I have complaints, but I still pretty pretty much enjoy and and like the amount of help they do with publishing this comic. Uh, our publishing Trailer Park Warlock, not this comic they're working on specifically, but um, I gotta say it's been a pretty good, pretty solid partnership with them so far. I've been able to do what I want. I've been able to make the story that I want. And uh, I don't know, like, what else can what else can you really ask for other than more money? That's that's really all I want. <laughs> that's really all I want at this point. <laughs> Just more money. Uh, um, by the way, um, if that is something y'all want to help me with, you are certainly welcome to sign up at my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Matt J. Rainwater. Um, all I'm really asking for at this point is I just, for everybody who reads Trailer Park Warlock, I just want them to donate one dollar. If I, if I got every single person who reads Trailer Park Warlock who wants to read more of my stuff, you know, if I got 10% of the subscribers to pay me one dollar, I would be good. You know what I mean? Um, I'd be doing good. And so, 
that is a point I'm going to probably repeat in the near future. Uh, it's a point that I really want to make people aware of. Uh, Y'all can support me to make this story in a huge way with a very small amount, so long as there's a lot of y'all doing it, right? That's the, I think that model of doing things uh, works pretty well. And um, like I said, the more the merrier. Um, and thank y'all for y'all who are supporting me. And thank you for those of you who are reading, uh, who watch these videos, who uh, share my stuff, uh, who like what I do. I really appreciate it. It's it's been an awesome and really validating like relationship, you know. And so far as you can call it a relationship, um, it's awesome. I I can't believe like it's been able to work out as well as it has, you know. I um I don't know if I had any expectations initially about how this was going to go, but um, so far so good. That's all I got to say about that. Here's to more, <laughs> right? And I hope that y'all feel excited about this next story that I'm working on. Um, I kind of realized, like, as I was looking for floral patterns, and this pattern is just a placeholder pattern. I don't think, um, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to make a bunch of patterns before I start this comic, and those are just going to be Bella's patterns. Um, or I might hire somebody. I might, like, you know, find some people who can do that work and, and be like, hey, you like making floral patterns? Because I need somebody who can make uh, a bunch of floral patterns quick. And uh, and then do it that way. That's another, th that's another way I could do it. I might, I might do half and half. Like, do some of my own and have somebody else do some. We'll see. But um, I really like I really like this idea for this character. I think it's gonna make them super colorful, and I like super colorful stuff. Um, there's not enough of it. But what I, w I think I was gonna say earlier, something I kind of realized when I was doing this character design was that uh, this is basically well, these are the kind of shirts that my grandmother on my mom's side wore daily. Like this is just her. This is what she rocked day to day. And um, I c it's interesting all the little things that like your mind will do subconsciously to find the familiar. And nevertheless, this is what I'm doing, right? I'm kind of finding the familiar. Um, I like it. And that's actually working way better than I thought it would work. As far as a color palette goes, um, I'm kind of wondering if I need to change the color of the of her booty shorts or not, um, I'm not sure. No. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I had the wrong layer selected. So, like that. And uh, I think that works for the overall palette. I'll just do some quick shading. Yeah. Maybe I'll just give everybody floral patterns. What if I did that? <laughs> what if every single character had a floral pattern? Um, I'm not going to do that. But I like the idea. I like the idea a lot. All right. Let's see, that's the shade layer, lighting layer, uh, and I add a blush layer. Nope, that's not how you do that. Let's see if I can make this as quick a video as possible. I don't want to keep y'all too long. Um, so anyway, like I said earlier, going to be doing a podcast later on today. Uh, when I upload this video publicly, it will have already happened. You can check it out at um, the YouTube channel. is called Keep Keeping It Geekly or Keep It Geekly. Um, 
actually let me check I want to I want to double check that for y'all I can also include a link in this video um, but nevertheless I'm kind of obsessive so I'm gonna just yeah keeping it geekly that's what it's called um, I like I, like I was saying earlier or I think I said earlier who knows I can't really remember half the things that come out of my mouth most most days. Just kind of, it's just kind of uh, stuff that happens, right? I say words and then I forget them because they disappear into the ether. Like so many things in life. But anyway, uh, keeping it geekly, Cody, awesome interviewer. I have seen Cody do a bunch of interviews and I've learned a lot about, I basically have been able to catch up with the indie comic scene through him. And um, I used to be way more in touch with it when I was younger, uh, when I was doing Garage Raja and fell out with it for various reasons. Um, and so now I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this like, moment of reconnecting with it and I feel like I'm reconnecting with it in a more um not authentic or sincere but just like in a way that is more I, I think I feel more apt to talk with people because right now I think back then and this was like in uh oh let's say 2000 and 8 2009 everybody who was publishing the only thing they ever had to talk about, and sometimes this can be an issue still nowadays. Certainly, it's not like I, I'm not seeing this still. But literally the only thing people talked about was the economics of how to make money independently doing comics. I think at the time, um, the models were still being worked out. Um, there was a lot of controversy about some of the ideas you had people talking about the death of print comics blah 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 like there was just like so much um i don't know just like drama i felt like not like there isn't still some drama somewhere there's always going to be drama somewhere but um it was just i don't know like something about the way that environment behaved at the time uh, led me not to want to interact as much and nowadays it kind of seems like people have chilled out a little bit and have sort of a sense of what the field is like um, and it's kind of chill at least right now it's kind of chill hopefully it stays that way we'll see but I'm also I'm also at this point sort of a more mature artist. Um, my experience level is different from where it was at the time when I first got into the independent comic scene because I had kind of a chip on my shoulder and it was like, oh, I'm going to prove myself. I got something to prove. I'm going <laughs> to, you know what I mean? It's just like one of those, one of those things you do when you're a youth. Um, but now it's different. And where I am now is kind of in a place where I feel like I have a lot of experience to share with people um, who want to do comics, which is why part of one of the main reasons why I make these videos is to just talk about that experience for people who are interested in making their own art, distributing it, et cetera, et cetera. And why I do my podcast with uh, my friend Jao uh, to just do like just to discuss art. Cause I think, I don't know, it's a weird moment, I think, in history. It's a weird moment because on the one hand, this is almost some kind of artistic renaissance to a certain extent. Uh, you have so many people creating so much stuff all the time. And yet at the same time, I think there's something that's kind of missing because I, I think a lot of the people who are making stuff they're kind of mimicking what they see in pop culture. Not like I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm as guilty of this in some ways, right? I'm certainly guilty of this. But nevertheless, I think, 
I think it's important to have more experienced perspectives so that people can kind of say, oh, or can kind of see like, oh, you know, uh, for various reasons, like, you know, you can have people who are more amateur and more just starting out kind of have this moment of going, oh, okay, it's going to be fine for me. I'm, I'm just starting out. Like, this is just how it is. Um, and then simultaneously, you know, have people with experience say, say things to, to help give perspective about their own work, about their own lives. Um, I think something, something that is ironically sort of missing in the comics community is perspective to a certain extent. Uh, and not, and I don't mean this in some sort of like uh, blah 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 culture war way or whatever. I so like I keep bringing it up because I just hate it. Like I just don't care. I want people to make stuff. I don't even care what they make. You're gonna make stuff that's gonna like. <laughs> you're gonna make stuff that's um, <laughs> gonna get you on an FBI watch list. That's your problem. But if you're happy and you enjoy making it, more power to you. Um, that's sort of my feelings about that kind of stuff, is like, y it's your life, it's your decisions, you have to figure out what you're going to do. I'm just here to sort of give you, um, give you the insights that I have, as best as I can. Um, to to aid you in some way, hopefully, right? Like that, and hopefully to entertain you. I'm not expecting necessarily these videos to be like entertaining <laughs> to everybody. I mean, not everybody is into um, <laughs> whatever this is that I do. It's a little bit of Bob Ross and it's a little bit of just like um, some, some guy rambling into the void. Um, and I'm okay with that. I, I've been rambling into the void for years now, and I've gotten very used to it. It's it's something that at this point I'm not like, I'm not uncomfortable with. Um, I think actually it's extremely. I think on some level it can it can create okay it can either create a very unhealthy mindset. We've all seen people who just ramble into the void in public, right? Um, on the other hand. I think a certain I think it also for the right people creates a sort of humility in which you can understand for yourself like right this is just my opinion I shouldn't expect people to just listen just because I think that what I have to say is like the most important thing in the world I think that sort of perspective can be healthy for people I think it'd be healthy for people to sort of realize like just because you said something that you think is really intelligent or um, like super wise or whatever doesn't make you somebody that people have to listen to. Like just, just by virtue of the fact that there are like however many billion, a pe billion people in the world, um, a lot of people get overlooked. You might be one of them. Uh, the other thing is you might not be overlooked forever. So I think there is something that can happen where, especially for artists, because artists tend to be more, oh, susceptible to narcissistic impulses, um, to ego identification, to sort of really latching on to notions and feelings of like, I should be important. I am super important. That, that breeds a lot of, um, that, that can breed many an artist's downfall. I think that's ultimately the point I'm trying to make. And why, <laughs> why I'm attempting to do this is to, um, is to sort of illustrate like, you know, I, I have I have a hundred thousand subscribers on Webtoon. That's a cool number to have 
a lot of subscribers for. But it doesn't translate to necessarily everything else in my life. And it doesn't mean I'm, you know, like to me, I'm like, oh, I never expected that. But the internet has actually like allowed me to have a lot of perspective where it's like, okay, that number seems really big to me, but to another person, that's a tiny, tiny number because maybe they have a million or a hundred million or whatever. And there are different levels of importance that exists on the internet. And I think that something that I've kind of learned over time is that if you are doing something and you feel like you're supposed to be Im be important or feel important because you're doing it, um, I think that's in art. I think that's the wrong. I think that's the wrong way of going about it. I, for myself, I would prefer to engage in art because it's fun, because I enjoy it, and because I enjoy the. Um, I enjoy other people's enjoyment of it. It's this really fun sort of bounty of glee and happiness and thoughtfulness and whatever. Um, so anyway, I guess that's that's my little ramble for today. I hope I didn't keep you all for too long. Uh, I really like the way this has turned out. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Anyway, I hope you are having a good day, and we will talk again soon. Y'all have a good one. Bye.